Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to, to be with you and to be joined by those who are joining us online this morning. We can't see them, but it's like being watched by the saints in heaven. And I know that the video will stay online for a bit, so you can still share it with others so they can watch it and share in this memorial service for Rachel. But it's good to have you with us. And uh, seeing as it's only so few of you and there's enough distance between us all, you're welcome to, if you're in the same bubble, take your masks off, seeing as it's just the immediate family and you're far enough from me with my glass shield. Some people think that I'm worried that someone might assassinate me. Uh, that's not the reason for this glass shield. Uh, as we go through the service, you'll see some words appear in yellow on the screen. That's so that we can say them together. And all of these words are, are, are words that remind us of what we believe at a time like this. So if you'll join me with the words in yellow. Christ, your light shall rise in the darkness, and your healing shall spring up like the dawn. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The trumpet shall sound, and the dead will rise immortal, and the mortal will be clothed with immortality. And we pray together. God of love, who brought us to birth, and in whose arms we die, in our grief and shock contain and comfort us, give us hope in our confusion, and embrace us with your love. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Even though there's so few of us, you don't have to sing. I'm going to sing. I'm sure Edmund will join me as we sing, O oh Lord my God, how great thou art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me, how great thou How great thou art, how 
how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Let's be seated for a moment. Loving God, it's so good to sing that hymn. And imagine ourselves walking along paths through forests and gardens. And even now as we hear the birds that sing in the rafters of the church and around the gardens here, we thank you that all of this beauty witnesses to your goodness and your joy and your love. And so even though sometimes in the creation in which we live, things are difficult, life is hard, and sometimes we're overwhelmed by, by the struggle and the darkness and the loss and the sadness. That there are beams of light, signs of hope and joy that remind us that after all is said and done, at the end of our life, your goodness, your hope, your joy will triumph. So help our souls to sing this morning. How great thou art, as we celebrate the life of of someone who just shone that light of hope and happiness in her witness to all of us, even when she was in pain and struggling along. Fill us with a sense of your presence, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to read one scripture and then invite Edmund to come and read a tribute from the family and then share some words from our congregation and her and Rachel's Bible study group. We read from John chapter 14, from 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. Invite Edmund to lead us in the tribute. Morning, everybody. We've gathered here today to bid the final farewell to our dear sister, Mother, Granny, and possibly great-grandmother, Rachel Manthe. My name is Edmund Dean, and I'm a member of Amy's cell group, where Rachel was also a member. Almost two weeks ago, I was informed of Rachel's death, and the news caused some mixed feelings amongst our members, because although we were all sad, some were actually saying, Thank God, because now she's free from all her pain. So on behalf of the cell group, I would like to extend our sincere condolences to the relatives and friends of the deceased Rachel Mainte. Now, now Rachel was a very private person. And what I have to offer you here today is basically just the perceptions that we've had about Rachel. Because a character mirrored the life of a devoted Christian. And despite the physical challenges she experienced, she never stayed away from church. On Communion Sunday, She would reserve a seat roughly where you are sitting now, Shemaine, and maybe you can feel her presence there at the moment, saying, you're sitting in my seat. 
She used to sit there because it was easy for her to, uh, to, to get up and, um, and, and, um, and move with ease to the rail to accept the elements that have been prepared. And all other Sundays, Rachel would be sitting at the back of the church because, you know, it was difficult for her at times to move around. And so at the conclusion of our church meetings, some of our men, and sometimes Gus, would support her back to her vehicle and bid her a fond goodbye. And you know, because Rachel was such a dedicated person, and always willing to do things by herself, it reminded me of the story that we read in uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 38, which tells the story of the prophet, or as you wish, the prophetess Anna, who despite her advanced age, because when we do the calculations, it seems like Anna was probably 108 or 110 years old, but she basically lived at the temple. She had her own home, but she would travel from home to the temple, and at night she would go back again. And in all of this is that you never heard, we never heard a year in the Bible that Anna has uh, complained about the fact that she had to go to the temple. And it's the same with Rachel. We never heard her complain and say, my back's too sore, I can't do it. She was always here. And during the week on Thursdays, depending on her uh, health, she would attend our cell group meetings and our leader, Amy Saunders, commented that Rachel was a serious and committed disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ because she knew Rachel for many years and they'd often meet and they would share their thoughts in private. And all the evidence point to Rachel being a redeemed person and we believe that she's been welcomed into paradise. On the 10th of July every year, our cell group members would call her to wish her a happy birthday. And I recall that every time I phoned her, I would sing to her and she'd enjoy it so much. And I just want to share the words with you because I've been told to stick to uh, preaching and not singing, and that's by my wife. And it goes like this, happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God's richest blessing now rest upon you. And after sharing the pleasantries, she would always express a gratitude that the group remembered her. And I would commend that she looked good for her age. For three years ago, she, I said to her, you look good for 66. And she would promptly reply, 88, and remarked that I was still wet behind my ears. I met Rachel at Pick and Pay at Boy de Gouda. On one day, there she was in a conversation with Gavius, who is in the employ of Pick and Pay. Now, Gavius is a committed Christian and he hails from Burundi. And Rachel mentioned that she always felt safe when dealing with him. She would beforehand prepare a list of all her requirements. And as soon as she got to pick and pay, she would hand a list to Gavias and he would swiftly move through the aisles to get all of her, her groceries. So before Rachel would drive off, Gavias would say a prayer for her safety and well-being. And I must tell you, she was loved by everyone she knew. We will miss Rachel and pray that God will grant the family strength, courage, and hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was also asked, uh, in fact, I offered to Stephen when he told me that it was going to be difficult for the family to do the tribute, and I offered to do it. So I'm now going to read to you Charmaine's heartfelt tribute to her mom. 
But she asked me yesterday if I could include one of her favorite psalms, and that's Psalm 23, which I will now read. It's a psalm of David. Sorry. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shemaine, your words read, Mum, I know that we were always at loggerheads and that you always wanted to have the last say. But you were my mum for 65 years, and whenever we asked you for something, you always gave with an open heart. You're always there for me and Tanya. We love you. May you rest in peace besides my dad, my brother, and my niece. No more suffering for you. You will remain in our hearts forever and will be sorely missed. Love you forever, your daughter, Shemaine. Now we get to Stephen's tribute to his mum. And he starts off by saying, to my dear mum, mum, I would like to thank you for helping to raise me to be who I am today. I was talking to Kim and Chantal the other evening. You would not believe how they reminisced about the time when you used to fly them down to Cape Town during the December holidays, and how you and the two young girls would enjoy yourselves traveling to some of the parts of Cape Town, especially the Cape Sun, and they said, thank you, Gran. And mum, you were a good leader, a businesswoman, a mother and a friend. And I thank you for guiding me, leading me and teaching me. Mum, you are now in a much better place with your new heavenly family. That's with your son, my brother, your husband, my dad, your granddaughter, my daughter, Tamlin. Your pain, suffering, and discomfort has ended. And God bless for that. May you rest in peace. Lots of love, your son, Stephen. And now I just want to end off with a prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, the foundations of the Manthe family have been shaken ever since the news of death, the death of Rachel has reached us. And we thank you for the love you displayed in her life and the bond which you sustained throughout our earthly life with the children and grandchildren, extended family and close friends. And we are grateful that after medical signs did all they could for her, you stepped in to provide a life for Rachel that no one else could do. The grief resulting from the loss is tangible in this family, and we pray that you will deal with each one on a personal level as you extend your healing to the family. Our hearts are broken, and we all we see are a myriad of problems, but we Pray and ask that you'll send your spirit to comfort each member of the bereaved family. And we thank you for the life of Rachel 
and the legacy she has left for the family. And may the family continue to build on the good work that she's accomplished in their homes, in their churches, and also in their communities. We pray that as we reflect on Rachel's life, we remember the positive things she did as a means to keep all of us sane. And Lord Jesus, you comforted Mary and Martha at the grave of their brother Lazarus. And today we need the same healing to help settle the grief that is so evident. Provide each one of them with the words of courage and hope that will carry them from this day forward and that they may see you as the Lord of the resurrection. We pray for each one of us to follow in the way of the saints and that when our time comes to depart this earth, we shall be found acceptable as citizens of heaven. Help the Manthe family cope through the wisdom of your Holy Spirit as they make arrangements for the final resting place of the remains of Rachel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much to Edmund and uh, tell Sadie if she's what maybe she's watching this. You can sing, it's not too bad. Singing, singing, and preaching. You can you can join me in that business. <laughs> thank you, and also I also want to thank you for the care with which you have cared for Rachel as a member of your your group, you and Amy especially, and it's so good to to know that she just had a community around her that loved her even though she tended to stick to herself quite a lot. She was, when she was here, she was definitely here, and everybody knew about it. I just want to read a scripture from Acts chapter 9, from verse 36, and I, I love this story. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas, and that means dear. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. Peter went with them. And when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room, and he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We pray. Amen. It's a beautiful scripture because it speaks about the love that a community had for a beloved disciple that belonged to them. This lady called Dorcas or Tabita was so well known in the community that that the whole community gathered to mourn when she passed away. And the disciples were in such a, a tiz at her loss that they went to call Peter from the neighboring town. Now Peter was the, the main guy in the whole church at that time. He was the founding disciple. He was a very important and busy person. But they were aware that the loss of this one member of the church would be so devastating that they needed to call him. And then we get to this miracle of Peter kneeling down and praying for her to, to be raised to life again. And in this miraculous Bible story from the book of the Acts of the Apostles where things like this happen, Tabitha is raised to life to continue to serve the community. This was at the, the early times, the teething time 
of the church when people were just learning how to live with Jesus and in faith. Today, as we mourn the loss of Rachel, we're aware that nobody's going to kneel and pray and she will rise again. But we know that those resurrection accounts in the book of Acts, in the life of Jesus, those times when Jesus prayed and people were raised to life, that when Peter prayed and people were raised to life, are signs and symbols of what God has in store for us in the future. But the difference is, all those people who died and were raised to life by Peter or by Jesus or by the prophets, they would get old and die later on. The honest truth is, nobody gets out of this alive. But the greater truth is that there is a resurrection. There is a resurrection in the body which is almost impossible for us to conceive of. As we think of Jesus, who, when he had risen again, would walk through walls, it seems, and appear in locked rooms. At the same time, he would eat with his disciples and he would move from one place to the other. A sign of the hope that we have that one day our mortal bodies will pass away. But as Paul says, we'll be clothed again with a spiritual body. And as we sang that, how great thou art him at the beginning, I just imagined myself in my immortal spiritual body wandering around a restored creation and seeing the beauty of the streams and the rivers and the life that God has created, which God hasn't created to delete one day, but to restore one day and have it in all of its fullness and beauty. I was reminded of God's goodness and joy and the purpose for which we are created, and that is life. And so, yes, the death of someone we love plunges us into a crisis, a feeling of emptiness, a part of us is missing. But that longing is because that loss was not meant to happen. That longing is because that loss is not permanent. But one day we'll join our brothers and sisters and mothers and children in that heavenly place where all our tears will be wiped away. And in the revelation to John, we read that it is God himself who wipes away our tears. That God himself will take away all the woundedness of our hearts and souls. That God himself will not just rise us to life again as is, is in the story of Tabitha or Dorcas, but God will restore us to healing and wholeness. And as we think about those we have lost, we often regret the things that we've said and done, and we often think, how can I make these things right? And the honest truth is that it is God who will make these things right. As we confess our sins and our brokenness to God, and God takes that into himself in Jesus Christ and heals and restores us. The lamb will be her shepherd, guiding her to all that she needs and leading her, like we read in Psalm 23, to the still waters and making sure she is healed and healthy and satisfied. Because we know that God has a purpose for each of us. And in those tiny moments of hope and joy, we see God's purpose revealed. And we just need to learn to maybe put our feet and our hands into those little lights of, of light and joy as rungs in a ladder that help us to hold on in a difficult storm of life and stay hopeful and positive for the purposes for which God has prepared us and the world we live in. And so I close my word with my favorite, Revelation chapter 7, from 15 to 17. As we think of Rachel, we think of this verse. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen.
Thanks be to God for his word to us. We continue in prayer. Gracious God, we praise you for creating us in your own image and calling each of us to love and serve you. We thank you for Rachel and for all we treasure and remember with gratitude about her. As memories fill our minds, assure us of your forgiveness for things said or done which we regret. For things we long to do but never did. Long to say but never said. Give us the strength and courage to leave Rachel in your keeping, trusting in your everlasting goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of mercy, as Rachel has journeyed beyond our sight, we commend her to you. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the joy of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us to stand as we say our final prayers of commendation. And committal. Loving God, since the earthly life of Rachel has come to an end, we commit her body to be cremated. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for they rest from their labors. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Your Son, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising again, restored to us eternal life. And may we go forward eagerly to meet our Redeemer, and after our life on earth be reunited with all our sisters and brothers in that place where every tear is wiped away, and all things are made new. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We needn't be seated just yet as we get to the blessing, but I want to thank you for the privilege of allowing us to be here for your mom and for the privilege of sharing in her life in all these years. And I pray this blessing for all of us. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the world peace, and to us and all the faithful life everlasting. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.